What's up, everybody? Welcome to Toxic Hustle. My name is Jay Tragic Jeffrey. Welcome to Toxic News and Toxic Trading, episode nine. We're going to be talking about banks and their need for collateral and why saying this time is different when it comes to the Bitcoin market isn't a joke. It's a reality. And the fact that we're also going to talk about the BitScap update we did earlier today in one of the videos. So let us get into the news. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what happened yesterday. Trading is halted for New York Community Bank and what comes next. New York Community Bank is facing the possibility of collapse after the bank's stock cratered Wednesday to less than $2 per share, a decline of 83% on the year, and trading was halted. The Queens-based lender confronts compounding pressures from losses tied to its rent-stabilized multifamily portfolio, increased regulatory scrutiny, and large uninsured deposit base. Take a look at that word, though that phrase, large uninsured deposit base. Uninsured deposits. We talked about the need for collateral in this video, so I want you to see what's happening. It happens every March so to speak, the last couple of years. One commercial real estate banking professional who asked not to be named, of course, they don't want to be named. He doubted the bank will survive the current stress. What's happening? And he quotes, what's happening now? No, I'm not convinced New York Community Bank will survive, said the professional. I don't think they will. And if and when that happens, it will be like Signature Bank going under a vacuum will open a daisy chain. Uh, the bank closed at $3.22 on Tuesday, a 69% fall from the $10.38 share price the stock traded to prior to a January 31st earnings call that reported $252 million loss tied to loans on the bank's office and rent-regulated properties, commercial real estate. That's what we're talking about. And fourth quarter credit losses reaching a staggering, get this, $552 million. So I'll say this over and over and over. While we're not going through the same problems from the last great financial collapse of 2007, 2008, or right around 2006 as well, while we're not dealing with residential properties, the problem has reared its ugly ass head on its on commercial real estate. 2020, Rona Rona made everybody go home and work from home. And for years, I've told family and friends that companies, to me, businesses in general, the way that they are running, don't make sense to me. Because why are you commuting in this world of internet why are you commuting to a computer makes no sense and that's what's transitioning this ideal that hey you're going to waste hours of your day two hours a day going back and forth to this office to sit at another computer and waste your time with meetings that is not efficient of capitalization. Uh, that's not official. That's not an efficient usage of capitalization within a company. Not anymore. Not in the age of the beginning, the burgeoning age of AI. And optimization, business optimization, job optimization. So we are starting to see more and more banks needing collateral because their rents on their commercial real estate properties, the leases are due. And let's say you have a five-year lease or a 10-year lease or a four-year lease. Okay, rewind four years ago, what was the interest rate back then? Almost zero. Fast forward now, where's the interest rate? Now you have to reappraise these properties at this higher interest rate environment. Them prices way too high. They need to cut it. So that is the problem. And these buildings, these banks are underwater, meaning the asset that is sitting there is not worth the price on the paper. 
Not anymore. Now, of course, that was fear mongering from the, the day before. Here's what's happening now. New York Community Bank gets a billion dollar lifeline from former Treasury Secretary Stephen Munchen's company. Beleaguered regional lender New York Community Bank is receiving more than one billion equity investment. The majority of the investment, 450 million, is coming from former Treasury Secretary Steve Munchen's firm Liberty Strategic Capital. The remaining sum will come from Hudson Bay Capital, Reverence Capital Partners, Citadel Global Equities, and other institutional investors and certain members of the company's management, according to an announcement NYCB made Wednesday afternoon. So by the afternoon, after everybody's talking about this bank is going to fail, it's going under, they got a, 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 a flush a slush fund, flush fund of money so that they can get a billion dollars in cash so they can try to keep this bank afloat. The bank's stock plunged more than 40% earlier on Wednesday after the Wall Street Journal reported that the bank was seeking a major cash infusion after the deal was announced. The stock shot up 31%, but those gains quickly leveled off. Ultimately, shares of NYCB closed 7% higher for the day after the trade settled. This money provides a lifeline, Dave, David Cherverney, Managing Director of Equity Research at Wedbush Securities, told CNN. And again, this is due in part to their commercial real estate. What remains to be seen is if clients are keeping their money in the bank given the recent developments. In an update last month, the bank said that deposits were stable, of course they would, and that and had even increased slightly in the last quarter of 2023. That update came after NYCB reported a surprise loss last quarter in, in part because of soured commercial real estate loans. Banks tied to commercial real estate have a problem with collateral and they cannot issue new loans without new flush slush capitalization coming in new money they need new money and there's no 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 uh, what is it no 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 more new no new friends no new friends no new friends no no new they got no new friends to keep bringing in them bringing any new money and while this is all going on fed chair jerome powell jerome's out on these streets talking about i am sure there will be bank failures yeah, you're sure there will be bank failures because there's you already knew that come fall of last year. And that's why you lowered interest rates starting fall of last year, um, winter of last year, or well, the, November, December of last year, because well, we're still kind of in winter. You already said, hey, we, we dropping, we're going to start dropping rates because you knew what was coming down the pipe. You know that how much commercial real estate is out here. You know your interest rate being this high is going to cause um, liquidity issues for these banks. And you know they have no collateral. They can't buy nothing new to collateralize to be able to say, okay, I have something that I can put up as collateral to get some type of inf uh, infusion of cash. And if they have to do a new lease, they're going to either have to reappraise these buildings or have some new collateral to get new funding. So what's coming down the pipe as far as collateral? Let's talk about what's going on in crypto because it's going to be interesting whether or not this plays out. And this will be a deeper play from what I'm talking about right now, but we'll talk about that, talk about that in a second. Willie Wu says Bitcoin could break 125,000 minimum before the end of 2025 as full demand is unleashed. Here's what he means. On-chain analysis uh, analyst Willie Wu said Bitcoin could hit 125,000 mark at minimum this year if financial giants BlackRock and Fidelity alloc allocate relatively conservative amounts of capital. Wu tells his 1 million followers on, on, uh, on Twitter that if clients 
of the two firms decide to rotate 3% of assets into Bitcoin, BTC could easily hit $2.5 trillion in market cap. Now, here's what he said in quotes. BTC's price will go past 125K minimum before the end of 2025, which that makes sense for a bull run, just from BlackRock and Fidelity clients if they rotate 3% exposure into Bitcoin. Here are the, uh, here's the optimistic portfolio allocation at that percentage. BlackRock would have 9.1 trillion in fidelity right no well for, uh, not blackrock has 9.1 trillion fidelity has 4.2 trillion so blackrock has 84 percent fidelity has three percent recently Fide fidelity's canadian subsidiary revealed a one to three percent allocation to crypto assets in its fidelity all in one conservative etf conservative now understand, a conservative ETF in Canada already holds Bitcoin, and you're not supposed to have any speculative assets or highly spec speculative assets inside your portfolio. So they're already treating Bitcoin in Canada as a certain or, or a strong co uh, commodity play, a strong commodity play inside their conservative fund which is currently just under 200 million in net assets under management. So now if we look at their allocation for their all-in-one conservative ETF in Canada, investment grade debt, so debt <laughs> from investment grade debt is 59.1% of their portfolio. Now we already talked about commercial real estate and how shaky that is. So you can see that's not actually conservative. That's risky. But you and I know what's going on. U.S. equities, 19.6%. U.S. equities, that's U.S. stocks, which are at prices well, are way too high. They need to cut it. That's 19%. International equities, 9.6%. Canadian equities, 9.6%. Cryptocurrencies, 1%. Global equity, equities, 1%, and money market, cash or, or other assets, is negative 0.2%. According to Wu, the 125000 price target is conservative, given that Fidelity and BlackRock's assets are still only a small par portion of the, over, of the available global wealth. Very conservative as it's, in quotes, he says, very conservative as, as it's only 13.3 trillion of global wealth accounted for. There's 500 trillion out there. Presumably quite a bit of this comes on because of this validation from the largest asset managers. Now we're talking one to 3% is what he's saying that could potentially get Bitcoin to $125,000. I'm going to show you something that BlackRock's telling their private equity investors. Shocking. Bitcoin strategy from BlackRock calls for 28% allocation. BlackRock has allegedly, BlackRock's asset manager has allegedly recommended a bold 28% allocation to Bitcoin investors' portfolios. This figure emerged from a private client event hosted by BlackRock, which was focused on promoting their Bitcoin ETF. So this is new. This is new, new. Their IBIT. According to information shared by investor Fred Krueger on Twitter, during the private event, BlackRock executives expressed surprise that the strong interest in Bitcoin coming from quarters had not they had not anticipated. So they hadn't anticipated how well this would do. It went above their expectations. This interest from a diverse group of institutional investors, so not retail, not everybody else getting into the ETF, their institutional investors and firms signals a potential change in the traditional financial sector's approach to cryptocurrency. So what they're saying is they're changing their thought process as to how they're looking at this due in part to the unexpected push 
from institutional, traditional markets, in institutional investors and traditional financial sectors that are very interested in getting into their ETF. A presentation by Quantitative Analysis at the event outlined how valuing and modeling Bitcoin within a portfolio could be rationalized, especially for the more conservative institutional investors. Again, that conservative word. The suggestion that a 28% allocation to Bitcoin could be considered sensible since becoming a talking point among industry insiders. Now, of course, there's skepticism about that position, and I wouldn't say that they would ever go to that 28% mar uh, market themselves, but they are telling their investors, hey, you give us your 28%. You carve out 28% of your portfolio and you give that to us and we'll put that in and we'll put 1%, 3% of everything we're doing. So you bring us that money, we'll put 1% of it out there, out there, and we'll also do things with your portfolio to be able to get you other value outside of just the Bitcoin ETF. What did we talk about in the other video I did? In one of the other videos, I said, what, uh, especially the one that was dealing with the, inf uh, the infrastructure for Bitcoin. And I said, Bitcoin's infrastructure that these banks, these uh, the BlackRock, the funds, Fidelity, they would position themselves into purchasing hardware. And we saw what that looked like at scale, at paying $5,000 for a brand new miner, and we saw how fast what they made per day on that miner was dropping. You have to have a different sort of cash flow uh, equivalency to be able to get into that game now. You've got to be willing to buy, you, you have to have access to buy these machines so early, which you can't do on our level, but they'll be able to pull off. These banks, these funds will be able to pull this off. And what they'll do is start mining. The, the We're talking about the infrastructure of Bitcoin in that other video where I talk about that. The infrastructure of, uh, of Bitcoin reminds me of what happened during the tech bubble. Yes, it popped. But when institutional money began coming in, they started buying up machines. That is your Googles. That is your Amazon uh, web services. That is your... Um, any all the hosting and server companies that got launched from this. That's your oracles. That's your Salesforce. So all of those companies got into the hardware game and began licensing out or renting out space on their machines. That's how they made money. Now, that is going to be the next phase, which is buying these machines and earning Bitcoin based off of mining in locations where they can get cheap electricity or they can or get damn near free electricity. That would be at dams, hydroelectric plants, that'll be solar, that'll be wind. And Texas has two of those. Now and as well, this is going to be the next play. Bitcoin ETF giant Grayscale introduces a crypto staking fund. Grayscale, the, in, the investment firm behind the biggest spot Bitcoin ETF for now, because we know BlackRock's going to crush that, introduced a new fund that stakes cryptocurrencies to earn income. The Grayscale Dynamic Income Fund, or GDIF, the company said Tuesday, initially will own assets for nine blockchains, Aptos, Celestia, Coinbase Stake Ethereum, Cosmos, Near, Osmosis, Polkadot, SEI, which is in our trading robot, and Solano, which will soon potentially be in our trading robot. It, seen, it aims to distribute rewards in, the, in U.S. dollars on a quarterly basis, not a daily basis, weekly basis, uh, which some of these staking coins, well, they won't do daily, but let's say every... X amount of days, three or four days, you get a staking reward. So you're not going to get the staking rewards that they get by staking it yourself. You're going to get it every quarter based off of whatever numbers they want to give you. As I um, And they're quoted 
Grayscale is quoted, as our first actively managed fund, the GDIF is an important expansion of our product suite and enables investors to participate in multi-asset multi staking through the convenience and familiar familiarity of a singular investment vehicle. In other words, give me money, give me money, give me money. Give me your money. That's exactly what they're going to pull off and they're going to get this money. And the other banks will follow suit in time or the other investment firms will follow suit in time. But they start, they are the virtue signal. And here is the next virtue signal. Just as Grayscale virtue signaled having a Bitcoin as an ETF and putting it on American shores because it was already an ETF everywhere else. This is the next thing. I'm going to do a video about staking because I'm, I'm earning staking rewards on multiple platforms. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. One through Coinbase and one through a private wallet. And this way you can take advantage of this ideal on your own without having to buy into a locked fund, not your keys, not your coin. So why is all of this important? It's important because you see what it's saying right here? These are the coins that I, I, I would put on a, on a trading robot. I would put these on a trading robot and earn on them. And I'm probably going to begin doing some, start doing some research as to which coins we may need to sell out of to look at these coins as potential plays since Grayscale is already green lighting that these are the coins that all other major in, in institutional investors should be looking at. Just a thought. Just a thought. So let's go talk about trading. Let's talk about what's going on. Uh, we have a video uh, that has been released. We just launched this video updating out of range bots within your bits gap that was launched today, earlier today. We also talked about the tokenomics of SHIB and how in this episode, we talked about being a market maker being able to start trading your crypto coins. But in this particularly, we talk about updating your bot. And I showed the updating of Shiba Inu as well as SEI, which we just talked about in that last article that is getting put on a staking fund. And as you can see, this is now three hours in and you can see that it's already earning 0.55% or 0.61% unrealized. That's just turning on the bot. Now, why are we watching everything that we're watching? Let's look at season of Bitcoin right quick. Right now, we have next week, potentially a pump getting ready to happen. I've been starting to mark the pumps rather than the dips so that we can see whether or not these play out. These are some past pumps that seem to be consistently playing out year year over year during a halving cycle. So we're going to see whether or not these same pumps happen again, whether or not we have a squeeze, which potentially is what's happening if we have a squeeze up before we have a, a downside dip. But if these plays happen, we'll be here, which we've already talked about if we go on the monthly, is at our past all-time high month over month. Not the all-time high in general, but I'm looking at all time high month after month sentiment analysis, our sentiment chart analysis, which link in description for you to be able to see how we do our lines. And also if you watch some of my videos, I show you straight up, especially the last video um, in here, bits got trading. I show you how we get to our monthly lines really fast, but we have adjusted all of our bots. And I'm going to be looking at some of these, especially whether or not we want to stay in XRP or in ORN. We might want to look at some other coins or we might end up starting some new bots and adding more coins to the portfolio to manage. So there's that. If you're interested in your crypto trading strategies, or what, what our crypto trading strategies as well. If you're interested in what we're doing, my suggestion is go to, you see here, you have your one month, you have 12 months, but you have your one month. And the, right here, the advanced 
will get to at least five active bots. I want to get as much bang for my buck, 25 active grid bots, unlimited smart orders. But what you're looking for is the trailing up, which means as the market goes up, the bot will move up with you. So you don't have to reset it or do anything. I don't trail down because I'm not chasing liquidity to the downside because then I have to put more capitalization in. I actually just only want to trail up. And then if I need to adjust, I adjust it manually like I showed today. So if you're interested, link is in the description. Make sure you get your bots going now because as these pumps, and let's go to the weekly, as these pumps happen and we are at the halving cycle, let me show you something of the past halving cycle. Okay, so you understand why I am getting ready early this time around. We're going to have to move this all the way down. And I'm going to have to, let's just go ahead and close out all these other windows real fast so that we can see a little bit of here. Okay, and let me drop this down just a bit so that we have it. Okay, now... I'm going to try to show you something. Here is May of 2020, round about the last halving cycle. So let's zoom in. And we said May, it's right, right here. I don't, we don't have it, so, but it's right there. So I want you to see something as we zoom in. May. We get a little dip. But then June, right? July, and then a run up. And then this is that little pump that we're talking about for April, that little March to April pump up. So that's why I said there's potentially a little pump getting ready to come. We'll see whether or not it actually happens and actually plays out. But I want you to see July of 20. This is the last halving cycle. So July, here's August. We have a little dip in August, and then just look what happens in September and October. We just go, this is where we have this, this crazy surge that just happens out of the blue. This is why I'm in early this year. because, And this is why I got the trading robots going, because I'm looking for this to happen. Now, this is all the way to December. This is January of 21 and right to 20, January 21, but this was 37,000. But you, you see what I mean? Before we go into our a little bit of a, a, a crazy slam dip, but then it went and rolled back up. So you can pretty much see that the top of the top was either here in April or here, you could wait for it again. You could sell off, get some capitalization around July and watch it run back up and get out around November. First week of October, last week of November, it's time to get out the market. You can't time the top. And that's why I say anywhere in this zone, it's a great time to be able to get out and look how long it took. Here's November of 2021. Look, it just hemorrhaged. This is when I told y'all, get out. I told y'all in December, get out. Get out, get out. I held on all the way through right here in December. I actually got out of the market way too late. I always told y'all first week of November, I mean, last week, uh, first week, last week of October, first week of November, it's time to leave. And I didn't do it. I stayed in. And look at the hemorrhage that happened. And look where it just kept bleed, bleed, bleed all the way back down to 20,000. Now, will that happen again? Who knows? But here we are. Started from the bottom, now we're here. So, as you saw that run-up happening in September of the previous cycle, the reason why I'm getting my bots going right the hell now is I'm preparing for that to happen all over again. So don't play. You can sit there and say, oh, it's speculative. It's speculative. I, I get it. I get it. But ask yourself, 
what asset class can you truly invest in right now? And which asset class has a robot that you can trade with? And I ran my robots through crypto winter. And now I'm running my robots at the be before altcoin summer even starts, which is around fall. So get, get right, get it right, get it tight, get ready. Get ready for October, y'all. Get ready for September, October. Get ready for this craziness that's about to happen. Don't be on the other side talking about, you know, you're buying high and selling, and then selling high, uh, you're buying high and selling low and then complaining, oh, well, I didn't know I was supposed to, be, I didn't know and I, this is all a scam. No, it is cyclical. Just like I wouldn't be buying AI stock right the hell now. I'll wait till a pullback happens because when AI is all over the place, there's going to be new winners and I will find those. And guess what's happening in crypto? You don't think that these machines are going to start doing that? And they're going to pay you for processing AI with open source codes? I'll wait. That'll be next cycle in my because it's not ready this cycle, but that's going to be next cycle. And this is the hardware that's going to be preparing for that. And Bitcoin will just be the digital gold. Doesn't hold the same as gold, but again, see what's happening. See the percentages that's coming in from these banks and understand what's about to go down in the DMs. My name is J Tragic Jeffrey. I'ma holla at y'all later. Please be safe. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe. Make sure that you're sending this out to your friends so that they can see what's about to go down. And... This will play out the way it plays out, but I want y'all on the best side of these trades. I will talk to y'all later. Peace.